News Channel 8 presents New Skills for Living with your host, Tom Lavin, a healthy plan for healthy living. Hello and welcome to New Skills for Living, a show dedicated to healing and wholeness in our community. If you felt troubled or trapped or overwhelmed by anxiety, you'll want to watch our show today. We have an expert guest, Dr. Kelly Wilson here to talk with us about anxiety and how we can work our way through that. Uh, Dr. Wilson is a professor at the University of Mississippi. He travels the whole world teaching people how acceptance and commitment therapy can make a difference in their lives. And he is the co-author of this wonderful book, Things Might Go Terribly, Horribly Wrong. Kelly, it's so good to have you here at New Skills for Living to share your wisdom with us. Thank you for being here. Well, it's a pleasure to be here, Tom. All right, Kelly. So Kelly, uh, being a psychologist and being the author of this book on anxiety, the first thing I want to ask you is when you're talking about anxiety, what do you mean? Well, if you speak to medical doctors or psychologists, uh, very often they'll take anxiety and divide it up into lots of different uh, varieties. So, you know, people who are uh, anxious and afraid when they're in the presence of snakes or small spaces and then, you know, uh, you know, people who feel anxious unless they wash their hands many, many times a day. Um, this book, we really don't um, uh, spend as much time talking about the hundred different ways that anxiety manifests mm -hmm. itself, but really um, are more concerned with the kind of general way that um, people worry about how things are going to go or how they're going to do uh, in their lives and the way that they can sort of be consumed by their fears about how they are doing and how mm -hmm. they might do and the kind of effects those have on, yeah. on their lives. Yeah. So am I understanding you correctly, Kelly? It's kind of like when someone's worry or fear really gets in the way of living a full and meaningful life. That's your main focus and concern? Yes, and Cer certainly so. I mean, what we see uh, clinically um, uh, is we see folks come in and they are uh, so consumed with how things are going to go in their future mm -hmm. that a lot of things that they uh, love and care about in their lives sort of lie fallow and, mm -hmm. and um, are neglected. Mm -hmm. And so some of those things might be people that are worried to go out and be with other people and, and be social or they're so scared that they might take a few drinks before they go somewhere or they might be afraid to go out and look for a job, those kinds of ways where functionally their lives are really being interrupted? Sure, absolutely. I mean, and for some uh, people it can be so extreme that um, they become fearful even to leave uh, their own home in, yeah. in the most extreme cases. Yeah. But it doesn't have to be uh, that extreme. Uh, this book, I think, speaks to a much wider uh, group of anxiety. So probably anyone uh, who's listening has had the experience of maybe sitting in a meeting and you hear a topic come up and you think, well, I have an idea about that. And, you know, you're just about mm -hmm. to raise your hand. Mm -hmm. um, but as you start to raise your hand, this fear sort of rises up like, what if I say something stupid or if what yeah. if, and, you know, and your hand comes back down. And so in these kind of thousand small ways, um, it's, it's sort of in the human condition that yeah. we sometimes give up um, really participating in our lives yeah. in order to sort of feel safe for a yeah. minute. Yeah, that, that's well put. Kelly, one of the things that struck me in your book, I think you talk about when it comes to anxiety, acknowledging it, embracing it, and then even seeking it out. Can, yeah. you, can you talk with us about that? Yeah, that's right. Um, one, of, you know, one of the things that we try to do in acceptance and commitment therapy um, I mean, one thing you could do is you could sort of say, here's how to make anxiety go away, except I don't know any way to do that. Uh -huh. um, and in fact, um, if you're engaged in life, you're going to be engaged in, uh, in life in a meaningful way, like things like relationships and work and trying new things. Um, that's going to be uh, scary for you. Yeah. Um, and so um, th this business of acceptance or even seeking out anxiety, it's not sort of for its own sake. Um, mm -hmm. But um, when we sort of tuck ourselves in to um, protect ourselves mm -hmm. from that anxiety, we very often 
cut ourselves off from the most meaningful kinds of directions we could take in life. Mm -hmm. So the seeking out of anxiety uh, in life uh, in, in this mm -hmm. um, book is always in the service of you taking your life in a direction that you could really care about. Yeah, so really saying yes to life and not letting our fears and anxieties hold us back, huh? Yeah, there's a, there's a story that um, uh, is told sometimes about, um, about a, a German aristocrat in a war standing up as the shells are falling around him. And he, he says to this Jewish doctor who's kind of crouched down, he says, uh, this shows the superiority uh, uh, and fearlessness of the German aristocrat. And, uh, and uh, the Jewish doctor says to him, he says, no, he, he says, uh, no, it shows the superiority of my people, he says, because if you were half as afraid as me, you would have run away long ago. <laughs> I, and I think there's, there's yeah. something to that story yeah. that, that courage isn't about not having fear, that courage is about walking with fear towards things yeah. that you care about. Yeah, well put, well put, Kelly. And so uh, this is just the beginning and we have three more segments. We're gonna continue with Dr. Wilson, the author of this book. We'll see you right after this brief break. Hello and welcome back to New Skills for Living. We're talking about anxiety with Dr. Kelly Wilson, the author of this book. Things might go terribly, horribly wrong. So, uh, Kelly, earlier you were talking about uh, anxiety, and I was kind of struck in that so many psychologists and uh, psychiatrists will talk about making anxiety go away, but you weren't talking about making anxiety go away. Can, can you tell us more about that? Well, there are some approaches that really um, look at mental health concerns, and, and the thing that they're trying to do is, you know, sort of out with the bad and, and uh, in with the, the good. Um, there's a funny kind of a paradox inside of um, anxiety, and that is that um, you know people even become anxious about their anxiety, um, and the kinds of things that we teach in uh, in things might go terribly horribly wrong, and and uh, in this treatment is uh, we teach people to um, see what happens um, when they take a more open and accepting posture. Uh, towards their own mm -hmm. uh, anxiety. Uh, sometimes we call it um, looking for Mr. Anxiety or um, you know, making friends with anxiety mm -hmm. and to sort of see what happens um, uh, when they do that. Now, a lot of times when you talk to people about this, they look at you like you're a crazy person. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, you know, because they'll say things like, I don't like anxiety. And of course, when we talk about acceptance, we don't mean um, you know, liking anxiety or wanting anxiety or needing anxiety or anything uh, of, of that sort. None of those things are uh, necessary. The thing that we ask people is as they walk towards the things they care about in their lives, um, um, that just maybe it's possible that they are sort of uh, big enough, that there is enough to them to, um, uh, to carry um, the kinds of fears that they carry as they mm -hmm. move towards the things mm -hmm. they care about. Mm -hmm. So again, what you were talking about earlier, living a meaningful life, and if anxiety happens to be part of that, yes. still being able to go ahead and live your life without it Absolutely. holding you back, huh? Well, and, 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 and in fact, if you're doing new things in your life, uh -huh. anxiety is practically uh, guaranteed. Yes. Now, the funny paradox that's in here is that if you can take an accepting, you know, like, okay, here we go now. In fact, I'm entirely anxious being here with these cameras pointed at me right now. And, and if you can take a posture that's sort of like, okay, here we go now, uh -huh. um, uh, what happens um, as you start to become engaged in your life? And so, like, just to use my own example is, uh -huh. it matters to me that there are people out there in your viewing audience who you know, feel so uh, trapped, and I want to be able to speak to them, and mm -hmm. I want to be able to make a difference to them. Mm -hmm. And my ability to be here and to speak to them and make a difference to them is more important than managing my anxiety yeah. for me. Yeah. And so, like, if me being able to speak to them means that, you know, I get to carry this anxiety with me, then okay. Yeah, that, that's a great here and now example, Kelly. Thank you so much for mm -hmm. sharing that. Now, there's a term that acceptance and commitment therapy has that 
It's kind of a fancy term. It's uh, psychological flexibility. Yeah. Could you break that down for us? Like, and that's kind of a goal, yes. isn't it? Could yes, you share? It, it absolutely we, is. We have, we have about a minute and a half, Kelly. Who boy. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> psychological yeah. flexibility yeah. in a minute and a half. Yeah. The world that people live in is a dynamic and changing world. You know, the places that they want to go, the people that they meet. And we think that there are ways that we can teach people to kind of exercise um, themselves psychologically that make it so that no matter how the world comes at them, that they have a way that they can mm -hmm. become engaged mm -hmm. in it fruitfully mm -hmm. um, and, and purposely. Yeah, well put, well put. So we're gonna take a brief break again. Before we do though, I wanna mention this book by Dr. Wilson. It sounds just like our minds when we're very anxious, doesn't it? Things might go terribly, horribly wrong. We'll see you right after this brief break. Well, and welcome back to New Skills for Living. We're talking about healthy ways to deal with anxiety with Dr. Kelly Wilson, the author of this book, Things Might Go Terribly, Horribly Wrong. So Kelly, one of the things that I've heard you talk about that seems to be so important is people who are anxious have very troubling thoughts. And sometimes what they do with them isn't very healthy or sometimes it makes things worse. Can you talk with us about what we can do when we have these troubling thoughts? Sure. Um, you know, this is another one of those, you know, we talk a little bit about acceptance of, uh, of feelings, uh, but that same sort of medicine is applied um, in this work uh, to troubling thoughts. Um, there's some very interesting science about um, just thoughts in mm -hmm. general. Mm -hmm. So if you put people in experimental studies and you give them instructions that say, don't think about X, you know, a, don't think about a white bear, what happens is if they really focus and pay attention, they can sort of make that go away. But as soon as they sort of let up for a minute, boom, uh -huh. it comes back up. Uh -huh. And that same kind of thing happens with troubling thoughts is that there's this kind of funny phenomena where the harder you sort of push it down, mm -hmm. the higher it seems to bounce mm -hmm. um, back up. Yeah. Well, then it's sort of like, well, what, what, what can I do um, mm -hmm. with it? And one of the kinds of things that we um, um, try to help teach people to do is, in to, is to come into different uh, relations mm -hmm. with their, their troubling thoughts. And, you know, one of them um, is, you know, is it possible for you to carry your troubling thoughts with you as you move ahead in your life? So sometimes we'll have people do, you know, things like write troubling thoughts on, uh, mm -hmm. on uh, little pieces of tape and uh, put the pieces of tape, you know, uh, on their car keys and their house keys and like that. And we might ask somebody, what would you like to do with these? And they say, well, I, these thoughts, I want to get rid of them. Uh -huh. But notice what happens when, you, you know, when you, you yeah. know, when you throw them, I want to put them underneath the couch, <laughs> except then you can't drive anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we ask people, you know, what if your thoughts are like that? Yeah. You know, like that, that the things that you would do to make them go away, yeah. make it so that now you can't go open yeah. the door to your house. Yeah or, you know, go ride with your friends. So, Kelly, like in terms of troubling thoughts, are you talking about things like where someone might have this thought that maybe they've had since they were just a little person, no. like, I'm no good, mm -hmm. nobody likes me, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. I can't go out and fail again, uh, I won't, I'm not lovable. Are those the kind of thoughts that yeah. people are trying to push down? Yeah, absolutely. And there, and there is a secret that people just have to know about this, uh -huh. is that people have like this thought um, you know, and it's some version of like, I'm broken, there's something wrong with mm -hmm. me. And I've been doing workshops all around the world for quite a number of years now, and I am thousands and thousands of people uh, into this. Mm -hmm. And I ask people who are sitting in my audience at very, every workshop, I ask them, what's the thing about you that you least like about you? And I ask them and I ask them what it's cost them and I ask them to settle into it. And then I start asking them, how long has that been hanging around? You know, did it just mm -hmm. start a year ago, mm -hmm. five years, 10, 20? And almost all of the hands in the audience go up at, you know, some age where they were just tiny and mm -hmm. a good number of the hands go up for people who are saying, I've had this thought, like I can't remember when there was a me that I didn't have yeah. this thought. Yeah. And you know, what's in that is one of the things I ask people is, what if everyone has a secret and it's the same secret? Yeah. 
you know? Like what if you and I and everybody else on the planet put down what we thought was wrong with us and we all agreed at the same time to sort of lay our card down and we yeah. looked at everyone else's card and it said the same thing. Yeah. So the, the kind of the sense of isolation, like I'm the Absolutely. only one Absolutely. who thinks I'm not good enough or Absolutely. nobody would love me, no. And, and you do, you help people, don't you then, Kelly, come out of this sense of isolation, like I'm the only one who ever thinks this and I really, I, nobody can find this out about me. Yes, and people would be, um, are, are stunned at workshops, you know, when I get like 150 people in the room uh -huh. and we, you know, I just did one this last weekend where we had this huge spreadsheet up on this giant screen and we had what was wrong with people, weak, incompetent, not yeah. pretty. And I started getting the audience to like vote, like, okay, how many people here are weak? And, you know, we get like 55 yeah. weeks yeah. and, you know, yeah. and, and people yeah. are looking around and they're sort of yeah. like, uh, you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's the human condition. And so, Kelly, when, when that isolation breaks down and there's a connection, mm -hmm. it's like, well, I, I'm this way and, and you are too. And we go, yeah, we're both, we're that way. Mm -hmm. what, what is it that happens then? I guess something happens with the anxiety. It's not as powerful as it used to be and we don't feel the need to push it down anymore. Yeah, if it, if it is not something that, you know, uh, distinguishes us as somehow sort of uniquely uh, broken in this uh -huh. world. Um, but, you know, we're taught by the culture to, you know, kind of, you know, don't let anything show, yeah. don't let anything show, you know, be strong, be tough. Yeah. Um, and inside of that, we build an isolation in the culture. Yeah. You know, we really do. Yeah. Well, uh, we have one more segment with Dr. Kelly Wilson. We'll hear, he will continue to share his wisdom with us. We'll see you right after this brief break. Hi, and welcome back to New Skills for Living. We're talking with the author of this book, Things Might Go Terribly, Horribly Wrong, Dr. Kelly Wilson. And Kelly, one of the key concepts that I've heard you talk about is the importance of values and then also of committed action. Can you share with us about that, please? Sure. I mean, the things that really brought me in uh, to this work uh, in the first place and that brought me to an interest in things like acceptance and holding thoughts lightly was really watching people being trapped in their own lives and, and their ability to sort of imagine directions that they could take in their lives and to move their feet in, mm -hmm. in uh, those directions. So two of the, I think, very important pieces in uh, the work described in this book is this kind of active authorship of uh, direction that people would like to take. So for me, the, there's a pattern of behavior that is called like being a dad to my daughters and being a husband uh, to my wife. And the committed action uh, piece, um, sometimes um, in the culture is understood as like promises about the future. And we really mean something uh, very different in committed action, uh, by committed action mm -hmm. inside of this. Committed action is sort of like this, like if the direction that I have, like true north, is headed towards this pattern of behavior of being a father to my daughters, what, I, what will happen to me in my life is that I'll find myself sort of veering off this way or veering off that way. And in fact, anxiety will tell you, go left, go right, uh -huh. Uh -huh. you know, when the compass heading is this way. And in spite of your best intentions, not when, not if, but when, you will find yourself turned this way. Mm -hmm. And so when you find yourself turned away from your values, um, commitment inside of ACT is this gentle return to that pattern. Um, now for some people, this is gonna be a very hard thing to do. And what I really you know, beg people to do is to just take the tiniest, smallest actions that they can find that are consistent with that. And mm -hmm. so it might just be walking by your own child and running your fingers through their hair. It might be a one minute phone call. Mm -hmm. It might be, you know, just the smallest sort of action and the importance, you know, when I teach people this, I always tell them, think small. Mm -hmm. You know, the culture's out there telling people, think big. Uh -huh. You know, uh -huh. I'm telling people, think small. Uh -huh. And it's because, you know, there's a funny effect that, that people get when they make even the tiniest steps that are in the direction. 
that they care about. Commitment inside of this model is that is found right inside of that mm -hmm. return. And so you are in the commitment the moment that you, you know, run your fingers mm -hmm. through a child, mm -hmm. your child's hair. Mm -hmm. You know, the moment that you acknowledge uh, your wife for making you that nice dinner, mm -hmm. um, you are you are in the midst of mm -hmm. uh, committed action. Mm -hmm. And so, Kelly, am I hearing you correctly? What I hear you talking about is uh, that line from Shakespeare: "To thine own self be true." Mm -hmm. Yeah. To to know what our values are, and then do our best one day at a time to be true to those values. Yes. Now. The funny thing is, yeah. is, sometimes people get anxious about, is this really my value, or am I really doing mm -hmm. that, or mm -hmm. am I doing as much as mm -hmm. I could be doing? Mm -hmm. And while they're busy doing that, they'll, f they'll be off their value. Yeah. You know, because yeah. their value isn't worrying about their values. And, and the, a the solution inside of ACT for that is, breathe and see if you can put your hands on one small thing that is in that direction you care about. Kelly, in this, we just have a half a minute, okay? Mm -hmm. But for those of us, uh, those people out in the audience that are, and myself as well, listening to you, and maybe there's, they've had problems with anxiety or their loved ones have had problems with anxiety, very briefly, what would you say to, to us? I would say, I, I guess I would say um, to go gently with yourself. Mm -hmm. um, in some ways, um, we can almost be like good parents to ourselves. And you know, sometimes kids, they don't wanna kinda quite go. And you know, one thing is we could whack them, but the other is we could just gently move them forward. Great, Great. Kelly, thank you so much for coming in today and sharing your wisdom with us. Uh, we're very grateful to Kelly, the author of this book. Uh, we wanna ask you to continue to uh, watch us here on New Skills for Living as we take a look at um, and have time to share with experts and wise people like Kelly Wilson about how we can have better, healthier, more meaningful lives. Thank you for joining us.